Hello, Lucas Chancellor here, also known as Chancellor Stickelbach. Today I will be making a video on the Mali Empire. People like to forget about this empire and talk about going to Timbuktu like it is an irrelevant place, even though it isn't. I hope this video brings attention to the empire. I made a video a couple months ago about the Mali Empire, but it was pretty shitty, so I re I'm redoing it, and now here we are. I hope you like the video. For a long time, the Mali Empire has been a largely unknown realm outside of West Africa. It was south and west of the Sahara Desert, and it stretched from Senegal to the boundaries of Nigeria at its height in the 14th century. The rise of the Mali Empire can be traced to Sundiata Akita during the 13th century. His name means Lion King or Prince. After being angered by the Soso Kingdom, for his tribe had been sanctioned and limited when it came to trade, he created a loose faction of chiefs from his tribe and he conquered the kingdom and he took the old Ghana capital. Slowly, he and his ancestors conquered and unified kingdoms to create the Mali Empire. The Mali Empire was known to be rich. It mainly prospered due to its trade of its goods. Ibn Battuta, a Berber scholar and traveler, described a Mali Musa or king. He wrote, preceded by his musicians who carried gold and silver cleavers, which are stringed instruments, behind him came 300 armed slaves. Mali truly was rich. Mali's economy ran on gold and salt. Gold was mainly obtained through mining, although it was sometimes obtained through panning in rivers, and salt was obtained in the Sahara. These goods were traded to places such as Europe and North Africa through camels on the Trans-Saharan trade routes, which had a large demand for them. Sundiata endorsed the faith of Islam. The Mali Empire became a hub for Islamic learning, humanities, and progression. This could be seen in urban centers like Timbuktu. Timbuktu was obtained during the reign of Mansa Musa I, and it was not only a very important and effective trade hub, but it was also a center for Islamic learning and culture. Mosques like the Great Jingarabur Mosque, which was built by Mansa Musa I, were built and they contained excessive amounts of information, philosophical works, theological works, scientific works, biographies, etc. Along with uh, Islamic humanities, Mali art and culture bloomed during um, the empire. Records were kept and art such as pottery hit a golden age. After conquering many territories, the founder of the Mali Empire, whom I have mentioned, Sundai the Kida, formed an assembly made up of tribal leaders and Arab merchants that declared him Mansa, or king. His government was split into chiefdoms, which, by definition, were ruled by chiefs that answered to him. They paid him tribute, followed his rules, and sent him troops when the Mali Empire was at war. As the Mali Empire grew during the reign of Mansa Musa I, he split the empire into provinces that were governed by governors, which were called Farba. Just like the chiefdoms, these provinces paid taxes to him, supplied him in war, etc. Sundiata Kido was the founder of the Mali Empire. Along with this, he expanded it, and the first golden age of the Mali Empire can be credited to him. He is also known for mandating the first charter of human rights, the Mandan Charter. Besides being one of Mali's kings, or Mansas, Mansa Musa I is known for spreading and expanding the Mali Empire, being arguably the richest man that ever lived, and being an important religious leader. He is also accountable for the Mali Empire's second golden age. Along with this, the story of his Muslim pilgrimage, or Hajj, to Mecca is widely known, in which he crossed the Sahara Desert on an excessive caravan, and then he famously bowed to the King of Cairo. All the while, he substantially inflated the Middle East's economy due to the fact that he handed out so much gold. As other commercial cities rose and developed, the Mali Empire lost its importance in novelty and wealth and trade, and so it leaders became more corrupt and this also led to its downfall. Other people wanted the Mali Empire's tr position in trade, and so in the late 15th century, most of the Mali Empire was conquered by the Songhai Empire.